Well, I'm hoping this is it. I'm, we are hoping this is it, that we are gonna get in the field today and start planting. Oh, that was a long commute to work. That had to be five, maybe 600 feet. Come here. No, not with the dogs here. You guys wanna hear a German Shepherd start up? There she goes. Here she comes. Anna. She's too excited. As you can see, the shed is still not picked up and rebuilt yet. But we do have a couple of dumpsters here. My seat won't swivel. There we go. We do have a couple dumpsters here so we can start cleaning things up. Maybe when we're not trying to plant corn all of a sudden, scrambling that way. And we do have uh, we do have some quotes being put together for a building. They are still working on a sensor on the tractor down at our uh, John Deere dealer. So the first thing we're gonna do is load some seed into a seed sensor so that when we get the tractor and planter back, just a two by four, no biggie. When we get the tractor and planter back, we've got seed in there to start loading. Since it is May 17th as our first day of planting, which is pretty late for us, that's two to three weeks behind normal. We are gonna pick an earlier season hybrid here. We've got the late seasons on top, and the two that we want are down here on the lower left side. So we're gonna go with a couple 94 day boxes instead of those 99s up top. That's just the way we've always done things. He's good running the uh come on he's get a run in the skid steer and i'll dump the seed in and handle the telk speaking of telk here we got our telk usa i'm gonna dump in the automatic dispenser it's gray and messy oh it's on the other side Here's the first seed of the year. Well, it sounds like one of us is gonna have to run about 30 miles south of here to go get a sensor for the tractor. One box down. I'm gonna go make sure that box and the other box are the same lot number here. Make sure they're the same seed size and then we can put them in the same hopper in the uh, cart. That all matches up so they're the same seed size, otherwise you start mixing seed sizes in the same side of the planter and things can get a little goofy. J and M cards are pretty sweet. Hop in, Anna. You can ride in here. Come on. She thinks I'm tricking her, and I'm going to put her in the kennel. Come here. Hop in. There we go. Did you want into? She does. It's weird. This is the only thing she likes to ride in. Dad went to grab that sensor, so he's going to be gone for at least an hour. The dogs and I are going to go grab a tree that tipped over up at the uh, the old church up the road that our ancestors helped build about 150 years ago. And it's kind of laying like halfway over the road. There's two trees up there, one medium sized one, one very large one. So we're gonna go grab the medium one that's laying on the county road and 
just drag it up here and toss it in our pile. Is all right? It's working her. This thing is chugging. But I got her in for a low. She's digging, but it's gonna get her there. You hate to see it. That was a beautiful tree, too. There's the beginning of our little brush pile. Trust me, there's a lot more to add. We might put a pile or two on the north end also so we don't have to carry them all down here. That'll be something we pick on all summer because right now it's not our top priority. These old Polaris Rangers are tough. It's starting to smell like dog in here. Welcome to the Johnson farm. Welcome. I have decided to attempt to finish the battery cable job here on the Moline. Yesterday wasn't going real well. I got the new battery in there, but we ran into some cable issues. So I'm gonna I'm going to re-attempt that because it would just be a nice thing to get out of the way. We don't need it to plant, but we kind of need it out of the yard. Feeding cable. We're attempting to. I got it. There's one spot where it goes through right here where I had to... Oh, 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 step in the knee. Oh, oh that's going to hurt for a while. There's one spot where I had to actually cut the end off the old one to get it pulled out through there. Well, I got it fed through, but this cable is a size larger. It's a little big for the clamps, but I don't think that's gonna be any problem. So before I put the cover back on, let's make sure we're in business here. You're not gonna start yipping at this thing now too, are you? I guess we'll find out here. the muffler on the end. It's, it's actually broken, but I think we can pinch it back together just right and throw some weld on it. You know, it's true what they say. With a positive attitude and a little stick to and some off-camera curse words, you can achieve anything. The wrong size. I got a bolt here. Did, did you get the cable through there? Or? Yeah, I'm tightening the last bolt here now that I forgot. Maybe let them start it up and make sure there's not another sensor. I hope they do because it was reading low pressure on row 13. Okay. Downforce pressure. So, and then maybe it always reads when you haven't started the planter up. It reads goofy ones off and on. Those right? downforce sensors are a bad deal. Because in the sense, it, so it's easy to say, well, it's just a sensor, and it is. But when the sensor's wrong, it doesn't put the correct downforce because the sensor's not feeding it the right information. Okay, yeah. And as soon as you fix 13, 8 will go bad. I've <clears throat> never had a sensor go bad in this tractor, ever. No. I couldn't use the clamps. There's a, there was a clamp that goes here and on oh, this step okay. bolt, but the clamps wouldn't go around that bigger cable. Oh, do you have the... No, because I had to take that off. That wouldn't feed through. I literally had to pull with the players to feed it through that hole. I figure I may as well park this over here. And then we can fill the bucket full of garbage to go in the dumpster whenever anybody gets an extra minute. I'm just going to leave the key in this because it doesn't seem to take too much draw from the electronics ever. There's some of our pallet racking that we bought on auction a few years ago. It was a good find at the time. Sounds like the planter is ready, so we're gonna head up and grab that now. It starts.
I don't know. I was kind of playing with it. I don't. I don't know. You want to play with it a little bit more, or should we put seed in it? Well, let's throw seed in it. We were about to throw seed in there, but I opened the cover on the left side tank that got uh, hit by the building, and there's chunks of plastic in there from the plastic <laughs> ring that holds the cover on. So I got to raise it up and fold it to open the bottoms to dump that out and clean it out. Otherwise, those pieces of plastic will cause all kinds of problems. You get a couple? Yeah, should we just dump them on the ground for now? Yeah, they're just slivers that would cause problems in, uh, yeah. in a row unit. A lot of problems. A lot of problems, yeah. Two feet! That's good! You gotta remember how to do all this. You gotta, I have to at least teach myself every year everything again. Well, there we've got a thousand pounds in there. We'll move to the next tank. We're only gonna put about a thousand pounds in each tank, just to, uh, in case we got issues, in case we don't get it planted out, whatever. That's good. Well, there we go. We should have roughly 25 units on each side. Should be enough for 120 acres or so. Back down the driveway I go. Let's do this, let's try this. Now, looks like the field is plenty dry. I'm just gonna end up unfolding here, starting things up, and honestly probably sitting and messing with the computers, the monitors, all the vacuum settings, everything that I need to get figured out to teach myself how to run this thing again, because it's been a year. A little bit over actually uh, a year ago we were finished planting about a week ago so I'm gonna sit here and mess around with a bunch of stuff there's always some kinks some bugs to work out the first day all right I have messed with the monitors I'm as close as I think I'm gonna get so I have picked an AB line squared up with it I'm gonna just take off straight across the field before I do any end rows cuz end rows are tougher going straight across on auto steer so when you can really make changes and dial it, the stuff in and we've got section control and everything to come back on so here we go we're gonna dial our speed down I'm gonna start out pretty slow here let's see mm, rows 1 through 24 are not planting near a target rate which is zero so when I purged the system and couldn't see any seed coming through there I was correct there was no seed coming through there but why what am I missing? I'm wondering if it's the CCS pressure. If I'm not pushing enough pressure in the tank. Maybe they readjusted that when they put the lid on. so it must have popped off here. It seems like it's on there now, but it, I can't really see the front of it or get into the front, but we'll crank up the pressure and see if it holds.
Usually if they're gonna leak, it'd be around the covers. Sure as heck, there is a leak there. I don't know if it's enough. It really doesn't seem like it would be enough of a leak to do that, but so I'm gonna take off planting or try and see what it does here. Maybe it'll move when I move, just like that. Row unit controllers, brush motor alignment error, row 12, failed brush motor alignment, turn motor shaft by hand and power cycle. Uh, these are the little things that I hate about starting out. The good news is there's seed coming out of the rows. The bad news is got to power cycle everything. What are the odds the battery will be dead when I try and start it up? And I may as well go out to row 12 and pull the brush out and check the alignment. See the little green seeds there? Wow, that is tiny seed. Oh my gosh, that was a tiny seed lot number. I can turn my vacuum down. Row, what are we on here? Well, that's got to be 12 because nothing came out. I'll bet I screwed something up when I sat on it, actually, trying to fix that boot. Because it didn't give me that warning before, and it would have, I think. It, uh, it should have. So, I think... Using it as a chair when I uh, when I fix that boot, pushed something around funny, and it alerted me. Luckily, they're easy to take out. I mean, I think I don't even think I. No, that spins easy. Back in the splines, that spins easy. It's fine. Cover. There's seed in the row unit. I can feel that. There's my seed trench depth. That's gonna be around that two inches. I may want to adjust that up as late as we are in the season. Two inches is a good starting point. If you're planting real early in the season, you're worried about cold rain or a freeze, you wanna get the roots down deep, get the seed down deep to protect it. Late in the season, inch and three quarter, try to uh, just get the stuff to get up out of the ground. I don't know, that's my theory anyway. We're so late in the season right now. <laughs> We're not shooting for a bumper crop anymore at this point. The second monitor in here at this point is not necessary at all. I've only got it because then I can run two screens at once instead of having to cycle through them and flip through them all the time. So it's actually all cleaned up. It's all on one monitor, which is really nice. I've got seed out of 12. I'm suddenly so confident I'm going to turn around and go all the way back to the end, which is at least a 100 feet back there. And I'm going to restart because I think we're going to be planting, but that, that's the second time I've thought that in the last half hour. End up. See what we got. <laughs> There's seed coming through. We are showing population, singulation, spacing, closing wheel, row cleaners, gauge wheels. How neat is that? I also see a bungee strap that fell off the planter. Plus I'm gonna get out, jump, look. Our CCS pressure is still low. But it's tiny seed and everything, so maybe Take that down. I remember seeing that hang on the hitch and not hold anything, so I, I didn't need it anyway. Look at that. First try. You see this crease in my finger? God put that there to mark two inches. That one's one inch. This one up here is three. That one looked plenty shallow. I'm gonna dig more on this side of the planter because the fan doesn't hurt my ears as bad on this side. That's where he was. I would say we're about an inch 
and a half inch and three quarter, which is pretty close to where we want to be. I'd rather be at that inch and three quarter. So now I'm going to in the eyeball, make sure they're all set the same, make sure our closing wheels are close to that trench. I'm going to check my downforce. You should be able to turn these, but it should take a good amount of effort, especially with the high speed. You run a little more downforce at speed. Same way with the, the uh, closing wheels, you want to put a little more pressure on them. I'm going to go planting a little further and see what we got. This is the only issue I'm getting is, I was trying to adjust my row cleaners, but row 12. Seed meter stalled, check meter for binding. System disabled. So that's, that's the row I had problems with before that I took apart, apparently. There's something really not happy, so I'm gonna go back there and pull the whole brush out. Other than that, everything was actually looking pretty good, but it was flashing so many warnings at me, I couldn't go to my main page to watch. So John Deere, if you're watching this, I know you've heard this for the last 15 years. When the warnings come up and we clear it, stop sending it back to us every second and a half. We're still trying to do other things. You gotta quit that, fix that. Not a bad day, a little bit breezy, but full sun. There is a chance of a little bit of rain in a few hours, but everything on radar is south and west a little ways. It's kind of, kind of looks like it's breaking up before it gets here, like maybe we're gonna be okay. I'm gonna dump my seed out of this row. I gotta remember how to hook this up. And uh, I'm gonna see if there's something in it that might be obstructing it. They're pretty easy to pull apart usually if there's a problem that's not a sensor it's usually pretty obvious I don't see anything here I didn't see anything in the seed so we'll keep digging here a little bit Everything pretty well comes apart with no tools, so that's handy. Okay. Here's our delivery system. Belt's got tension. Able to get that boot back on there so it's got pressure to the tank, but it's only showing like 10, 12. I can't get it more than that. The uh, like right off the right off the main fan, there's a T in front of it. And the left side was off. So I got that back on there, but now, like I say, it's only 10, 12 pounds of pressure instead of that, you know, 14, 15 is what I want, but um, I did get going, and it was going good, but row 12 is giving me fits, so I've got that all torn down now. I'm putting it back together. I haven't found anything. No, it was just giving me all kinds of warnings, and so it actually disabled the whole system, shut the whole, it stopped the whole planter from, from doing anything. Okay, thanks, Ron. Bye. We got a local John Deere service tech coming out just to make sure I got my settings right and things look good. Plus, we want to make sure everything's running the way it's supposed to after having a building on it a few days ago. So we're going to get him out here to make sure everything is solid. And hopefully by the time he gets here, I will have everything running solid. I had that whole row apart and I didn't find anything that stood out to me. Everything's clean, clear fits right, spins right, which usually means it's a sensor of some sort that's just lying to you. In a lot of cases, you can just tell that sensor to shut up and keep going, but in this case, it is not gonna let me do that. And sometimes, you never know, sometimes you pull stuff apart, you just kind of wake them up, and the next thing you know, you're in business. Let's hope that's the case here. Oh look, row unit controllers have a meter motor alignment error. I am going to take a picture of that. Turn motor shaft by hand and power cycle. Yes, for God's sakes, I saw it. Stop. Oh, for crying out loud. Once again, John Deere, you gotta make your computer stop doing that. Okay, so this time, turn motor shaft by hand and power cycle. We will go make sure we can spin that motor by hand. So that tells me it's probably not in the row unit, it's not in the brush, it's in the actual motor. 
that drives those things. Or it's a sensor on the motor that drives those things, which is more than likely the case. Hey Ron, before you get out here, um, just, just in case I need a part or something, I'm going to assume you've seen this code before, but this is row 12. It says, uh, row unit controllers have a meter motor alignment error. Turn motor shaft by hand and power cycle. So I'm back here, I've got the actual unit off of 12 and I can spin that shaft by hand. Okay. So it's not like it's locked up. Ron had me pull a couple of big electric plugs to make sure there were no loose pins in there. It kind of works like a trailer connector, trailer lighting connector. There's a whole bunch of pins configured in there and sometimes one or two will go loose. Those all look good. So, look at that. Now row 24 is mad at me. I'm gonna power cycle. I've had everything off on 12. Ron is kind of a whiz and he's on his way. He should be here in 15 minutes. But I'm gonna cycle everything, haul the power, start up again and see. We'll go here. I got a feeling it's gonna go 300 feet and do it all again. Also an odd setting by John Deere. Why? Every single time when I start the tractor up is the radio back on. I have to turn it off every time. I don't want the radio on. If I wanted it on, I'd turn it on. Stop, stop starting the radio. We're moving. Waiting for the numbers to come back here. We've got a few skips in there. If I speed it up a lot of the times, that actually helps. On these, they like to go, they're built to go fast. They really, do a better job going fast. I think I gotta pull my vacuum down more with this tiny seed. But all the rows are planting. Okay, let's see. See how fast we want to go here and what happens. I think seven and a half is good for now. We'll see what happens. Usually the singulation actually planes out and does better. Well, that's not great. There we go. There we go. That just changes the individual rows. But our CCS pressure is still low. 10 or 11 instead of 14, but it's doing okay. I don't know. It's, it's... I got a lot of settings to go through yet. Hmm. We'll have some screwy end rows here, but. I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna make another round and... First day stuff, you know? I know why the singulation. So the singulation, which is the perfection at which it's planting, is bouncing around. It's getting down into the mid 98% a fair amount which was concerning, but I figured it out. It's, it's because I'm on the variable rate map and it's moving up and down population a lot, so it's doing what it's supposed to do. When it holds steady, it's, well, it's 100 now, 99.7, 99.8. So it's good, it's doing what it's supposed to do. Other stuff check. That's pretty soft up here on the hill, which is fine. But down there is gonna be a different story. And I think we're pretty close. Things look pretty good and row 12 isn't acting up, neither is 24. I'm gonna get going up here, maybe put some end rows on and then we'll see if Ron has anything he thinks we need to check when he gets here. Well, Ron got here. We took a peek at a couple of things and actually figured out what was going on with the CCS pressure. And it's actually a little plastic elbow that goes into the gauge and supplies the air to the gauge to move the needle. So I had it cranked way up high trying to get it to move and it wouldn't move, I couldn't figure it out. Ron grabbed that little line and was messing with that line and I watched the needle spike. And sure as heck, it's a little 90 degree elbow going in there. So if you pinch that elbow shut, you can set it. So I had it set way too high actually, but it was reading low. 
So he's gonna dig for an elbow, and I'm gonna make around and see what everything looks like while he digs. There's eight miles an hour. Mm, there's row five. Row four was acting up before, for God's sakes. It's them doggone downforce sensors. We had row four going goofy before, then there was row five. Now they're all working, everything's green again, and I didn't, I didn't touch anything. So many little moving pieces in electronics. Once you get the bugs worked out, it's usually pretty good. You can do a really good job. Things are pretty efficient, but it's getting this kind of stuff worked out that always takes a lot of time. Have I mentioned that at all? Roll five has not come back on for downforce. It's been 10 minutes here, so it's, it's essentially reading nothing, which I think means there is no margin. It's just the row unit kind of floating, bouncing on the ground. And row 12 has acted up on me twice. I've had to stop and back up. So I get, Ron is still up here. We're gonna fix that elbow, look at those sensors, and I'll be back. I'll be back shortly here. Okay, well you got a while till I catch you, so we can we can wait a little bit here because I got all the end rows on this 80 and some mud to work around. Okay, and I actually just left home to see how it was going because I was getting tired of sitting in the skid loader and bouncing around. Yeah. Well, I'm up so, here. I'm, okay, I'll head up there and, and probably get fired up for see if you need any help or anything. So. Sounds good. Okay, see you in a little bit. All right, bye. Um, I'm going. Things are going okay, but I do have row number five acting up, but this time it's something else. It's a wiring harness for the downforce sensor not a it's not the same thing but we're missing a tile inlet that goes right there and I saw it laying in the road ditch the wind blew it a couple hundred feet off into the road ditch here so I'm gonna go grab that put that into place and then check our wiring harness on number five so these are the tops of the inlets the hick and bottom inlets that uh, go at our basins they, they're kind of like a big screen to prevent residue and debris getting down into the tile lines. Editor, I'm about out of battery now, so I'm gonna switch over to the other camera, and this will, uh, we'll do that then. All right, I got that put back into place. By the way, I just switched cameras, so I went back to the style of camera that I used for like three years, and then all of a sudden they changed something because the dang things wouldn't focus. And so I had to switch to this Sony camera, which works well, but it's it's too, it's really, it's bulkier, but I've been using this for the last year. Uh, different, a little bit different audio, a little different picture. Let me know which one you guys like better. That one, the one I've been using now for the last year, or this one that I used previously for like three years. I, I'm hoping it's this one because I can't get those anymore. That's why I switched back to try this. Plus this is smaller and it fits in my pocket much better. So let me know. You can see dad working in the distance out there and I've got let's see where's my acre counter I got to find that again now that everything's a little different 64 acres in I bumped it so far today which is also so far this season I guess I can speed up I'm just not used to not used to driving fast yet so that's an operator thing but the bad news you see that on the windshield that's that's rain droplets. It's shocking, isn't it? I just can't believe it. It sure doesn't look like much. I don't think it's gonna be much, but with a planter, all it takes is enough to stick on the wheels a little bit, and you're done. By the way, that sensor on row number five that was giving me fits again, that hydraulic one, all I had to do was touch it, wiggle it a little bit, and it perked right up. My gauge wheels are Pretty, pretty sticky right now. Okay, that's a bit because I just dug it, huh? Uh, no, I, well, I'm sure that has something to do with it, but it's raining pretty, pretty steady here right now. Usually when there's rain starting to drip off the corner of the roofs, you're getting pretty close to done. I'm about halfway back to the south end and it's a long field and it keeps getting wetter going that way. So I'm at that debating point where I don't know if I should just turn around and head for the north or just sit here until it's too wet to do anything while I try to make a decision and eventually it's made for me. I made like a uh, 
a really weird sort of uh, just kind of stubbed in a spot and started right there because this is all wet back there and the field is shaped funny and I'm at a weird spot in the field so that's what I did that's my decision I'm sticking to it go ahead criticize me if you want big whoop want to fight about it Key out, auxiliary power screen unplugged, charger screen unplugged, and it's got a master disconnect I will flip on the way out of here because otherwise the thing's going to be dead tomorrow. Well, we're not really rained out, but kind of. Well, I got 86 acres in. Okay. That's not very much, but it's something. It should go a lot faster now. It's a start because you didn't really get started until 3 o'clock. No, no. Well... More rain. Hasn't really been measurable yet, but it's enough to keep us out of the field. And now it's almost seven o'clock at night, so it's gonna get dark and it's gonna bring more moisture up. And... Well, thanks for watching, guys. <laughs>